fear uh, kicks in from the earliest possible age. Um, almost every day, uh, one of our kids will say, mummy, daddy, I'm scared. And they're scared really of pretty much anything at the moment. Um, a dog, um, a fly, I'm not joking. Jojo's terrified of flies at the moment. Um, a tree slightly higher than anticipated. Uh, Mummy, Daddy, I'm scared. And what I've noticed, and, and I don't know if this, this is the case for other people who are parents as well, but what I've noticed is that nine times out of ten, the first thing that I say is this. It's okay, I'm right here. So we've been focusing so far on these first three and wonderful verses from Psalm 46. And uh, we've seen together basically one big reason uh, not to fear. Um, do you remember, we will not fear. And the one big reason so far that we've seen is that God is utterly dependable. He is a refuge and a strength. He's ever present. And therefore, we have no reason to fear, even when very challenging circumstances overtake us. Do not fear because God is dependable. And we're going to move on now to look at the next few verses of this psalm, verses four to seven. And here we see another reason not to fear. And the reason is God is with us. Uh, just spot that focus with me through these verses as I read them through. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. God is with us. So these verses now shift from that picture of created order and chaos to the city of God. And of course, for the original hearers, everyone knew who that was, um, talking here about Jerusalem. And the picture being conjured up was one that would have been all too familiar to the ancient Israelites. And that is the terror of an invading army. And so can you see that um, picture being built up here? That uh, says God will help her at break of day. That is the time of day when an invading army is most likely to invade. Talks about nations being in uproar, about kingdoms falling. And just imagine yourself there in the city, powerless as the ruthless and destructive and powerful forces begin to encircle. And what does God say? Well, he says this, it's OK. I'm right here. So can you see that in the passage? So it says God is within her. God will help her. The Lord Almighty, by the way, that literally means the Lord of hosts or the Lord who is in charge of armies is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. It's OK, says the Lord, I'm right here. And his presence gives both joy and protection. So do you see how the verses start? There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Now, that there's no river going through the center of Jerusalem. This is a picture. It's a picture of God's presence bringing joy and satisfaction. That's because, of course, that's what we were made for, a close relationship with God, knowing that he is uh, with us. 
but his presence also brings protection. So we've already seen how God will help her at break of day. We've already seen how he lifts his voice and the earth melts. It doesn't matter how powerful these invading armies are, these kingdoms are. The Lord, all he has to do is lift his voice and the whole earth melts. And so there, his presence means uh, protection as well. It's okay. I'm right here. Now, the people living in Jerusalem at the time had a picture to help them to remember uh, God's presence, his joy giving, protecting presence with them. And that, of course, was the temple. And you can see it alluded to in these verses here. It talks about the holy place where the most high dwells. That was the temple. That's what made Jerusalem such a special place in the Old Testament, a place where through God's appointed sacrifices and priests, his people could have their sin dealt with and therefore meet with him. And by the way, this tells us heaps about what the God of the Bible is like. Yes, he's our refuge and strength, the, the eternal and everlasting creator. And yet he is personal and he initiates relationship with his people. Now, of course, for, for Christian believers, we don't have a temple anymore because we don't need one. Jesus came to fulfill the role of the temple as he became the perfect sacrifice for our sins and the perfect priest who brings all who trust him into relationship with God. Jesus' own name gives it away. Jesus Emmanuel, which means God with us. And as Jesus pours out the Holy Spirit in the lives of all who trust him, well, God himself comes to dwell in our hearts in a deeper and richer way than any Old Testament saint could possibly have dreamt of. And Jesus's presence in our hearts through the Holy Spirit continues to bring these things mentioned in this psalm joy and satisfaction jesus said whoever drinks the water i give them will never thirst and protection i am the good shepherd said jesus my sheep listen to my voice i know them they follow me i give them eternal life and they shall never perish no one can snatch them out of my hands protection joy satisfaction jesus says it's okay i'm right here and if Jesus is with you, you are eternally secure. And as the path we follow brings many hardships and confronts us with many fears, he continues to say the words our hearts most need. It's OK. I'm right here. The truth is, when trouble comes, often, just like our children, this is what we need to hear most. It's OK. I'm right here. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Well, why don't I pray now as we close? So loving Father, we thank you that you are right here with us, that by faith through the Holy Spirit, we know your presence in our hearts and pray that today that would bring joy even in the midst of difficult circumstances and that we would know the peace of your protecting, eternally secure presence in our lives. And we ask this for Jesus' sake. Amen.